poor bones, man. Canadian internet. Hitting him hard with that delay. <laughs> Alright guys, well, starting down here at the bottom right side of the map, representing Seed. Played a magnificent defensive uh, game right there. That was Bones. And that is tough to hold too as well, unless you have unless you have that split instant second decision making where you're like, man, I need to get like pump out Colossus and upgrades all at once because that's a big, big big key factor too as well. Without some of those plus upgrades, those Colossus, even though they do have AOE, they wouldn't have been able to get at uh, those Locusts as easily as they did. So, but at the same time, I do want to make a note that Hengelisk, if you maybe got the Queens out a little bit sooner and started creeping a little bit uh, quicker and that creep spread got up uh, closer up into the natural area, those locusts might have been able to get a little bit more damage done a little bit sooner, hopefully, and forced maybe some unit trades before Bones was comfortable enough to start pushing his way out. I don't know, there, there was a lot of things, there was a lot of things. There's a, there's a way to do that type of a build and play style where you get still the third base and you're also getting the plus upgrades as well, because that is pretty important, to be able to get the plus missile and get the plus uh, carapace upgrades, it makes uh, those Swarm host the locust last a hell of a lot longer and their damage output to be that much better. <clears throat> now over here at the top left side of the map, representing complexity, we have the Zerg player, Andralisk. Bum bum ba da 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 da. So kind of thing funny thing to note, today this thing started at about four o'clock my time, aka sixteen o'clock for those that use the twenty four hour clock. We're getting closer to five hours on this broadcast. Yesterday and we how many players do we have in this tournament? Remember, we have twenty nine players in this tournament. It is double elimination, but we have twenty nine players. Yesterday we had somewhere around mid almost up we had I think I'm pretty sure up to close to 200 players yesterday in the Red Bull global qualifier that thing finished in under six hours if I'm not mistaken at least my portion of the broadcast finished under six hours this thing due to the MSIB man the block the block on it because of all the crossover of players playing man I assume this thing is gonna go for at least another three hours probably another three yeah easily another three yeah, that's gonna. Yeah, no, that's gonna happen. Like, hold on. I'm, let me. Do, I'm gonna pop the bracket up again because I'm like that. We're we're still in the losers round three semifinals. So losers uh, round of four A. We got another set of semifinals that we got to cover. We have the winners final. Then we have to have the losers uh, initial final. Then we're gonna have the losers grand final, and then we got to go all the way to the grand final itself as well. And I'm not sure, is that going to be a best of five at the very end? No, okay, all matches are best of three, so okay. But, man, I'm, I'm, I imagine this thing going to be going for uh, a full another three hours. It's kind of crazy to think about. <laughs> My Russians being trolls, putting funny links in chat. My, my my Russian viewers actually lately have gotten like really edgy. I know if they're listening right now, they're gonna be like, yeah, 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 whatever. Keep talking your BS. But they're they're, they're starting to get edgy because I, I'm starting to broadcast a lot more events in English once again. Uh, used to do like with tournaments. I used to work a lot more with like especially in the past, like in 2013 and early 2014. I used to do a lot more in uh, in Russian. Now as of these uh, as of this past like m I would say two months. A lot more in English, and they're, and they're and they're feeling left out, man. The chats are just kind of like, man, come on, are you gonna cast this in Russian or not? Come on, man, don't leave us, don't leave us. What did we do to you, man? What did we do to you? Actually, the Ru the Russian scene and the esports scene in Russia right now, in terms of StarCraft Two, is kind of hurting. I will admit that, but it's funny because the whole general esports scene, it feels like it's kind of a little bit on the decline over there in the CIS area. So. They, they, they're starting to hop on all of these like webcam shows, they're starting to like, I don't know for whatever reason what it, what it's doing, but all, all of these, we, we call them like, re, re, well, let's call it real streaming, basically it's re, all these like a little mini reality TV type of streams-esque, so like people that are going on, um, oh, what the hell is that one, all these webcam uh, type of programs and whatnot, so I don't know, it's, it's really, really, la it's it basically it's really lame and very, like, low quality stream, and people are just restreaming each other, and that that's their form of, like, stream and entertainment, I don't know, it's really sad, we, we have it better here in America, our, our esports scene and quality of yours is, is a lot better.
All right, Robo Bay is on its way. Three more gates getting added on. We might see an Immortal Sentry all in. I'm surprised that actually there hasn't been the plus one upgrade. That might be the only reason there might not be. Hold on. This, this well, you know, the Immortal, the, the Robo Bay is coming out a little bit late. I actually wouldn't be surprised to see a third base coming out from Bones at this point. Henry still is yet to actually grab his uh, third hatch, and that's due to the fact that he went for a little bit of a quicker layer. Speed's underway. He's got the Spire coming out as well. He's really trying to mess with his opponent, I feel like. Initial gateway push coming on in here into the natural, and spine crawlers are not exactly up just yet. Queens are just there to defend. 16 lings in production, but uh, those lings are going to be coming out, and they might come to their death for whatever reason. I don't know why Bones is so timid. He needs to continue pressing on forward right now before the lings do come out. Drops the time warp on top of that. And uh, the gateway army just on its own might be enough to break Hendralis. We have eight mutas underway. Now eight mutas will be able to break down two stalkers. That is a guarantee. <laughs> but if I was actually Hendralis, I would start focusing down the stalkers just to make sure they can't put out uh, any you know damage on them. All right, so the mutas do start coming out right now. He's gonna try to get one of the mutas down, but I don't think he's gonna have enough time to do that as well. And now the poor queens are just trying to micro out of the way. He needs to pull the drones out of the way as well. He might lose too many drones just kind of trying to micro them through. And Zalts do end up falling, but this is gonna give a lot of time for Bones to prepare back at home as well. He's already got cannons coming up. He's got the Twilight Council underway. Plus two pl and blink underway. Handle desperately not only needs to get up a drone count, but oh, I was about to say, he needs to get a third base up, but look at this. Look at this sneaky little man. Look at this sneaky little Hendralisk over here at the left side of the map. Bones, meanwhile, is putting up pylons on the way other side of the map right now. Is he going to be able to spot this base? Oh, this is so sketch. <laughs> <laughs> Spots the creep right there. I'm not sure if Hendralis saw him. And uh, this could get interesting right here. This could get a little uh, hashtag dicey as we call it. Now the stalker force is a little bit too much for the mutas right now. He, uh, you can see Hendralis is desperately trying to get that mothership core down. Will not be able to. Oh, that's so unfortunate. And now cannons in position. Now there's almost enough energy as well for the photon overcharge. Just kind of little by little, not everything working out in Hendralisk's favor, man, this game. And here comes a pack of uh, zealots over here to the left side of the map. To the top left side of the map, we do have the war prism flying on in. Ling's desperately trying to get over to this hatchery. It's actually very crucial that he does actually save this hatch. He really needs to keep sure that he needs to make sure that he keeps the third base alive and all that way so he could keep his gas economy going. And uh, he's going to spot the pylon. He's going to be desperately as well searching for any additional pylons that are going to be out on the map. Now the thing that the problem is is going to be this warp prism. It of course has that mobility to pop up almost anywhere, and that anywhere is going to be the main base right now of Hendralis. Roach Warren just about done, plus one Flyers is about done as well. Queen gonna have to micro back, the Mutas are coming over to help defend it. One Zealot working his way within the mineral line, gonna start slicing away at the worker count a little by a little. Oop. Link's coming over to help out as well, but another force uh, over here at the left side of the map. Actually looks like the main army gonna be coming over here, spots and snipes that hatchery, but he's gotta be really careful. He's gonna lose some of these stalkers right now unless he can get them back by the mothership core. He desperately needs to recall right now. Ooh! If Hendril is spotted, again, game of seconds, man. If he spotted that war prism right there, I mean, not the war prism, the mothership core, he could have denied it. Now, still, two zealots are alive, doing some pretty nasty damage. Hendril is really getting split up all over the place. He's gotta retake a third base instantly right now. He doesn't have a choice. He's got it. He's got 14 roaches in production, but... Man. They just hurt, man. Those are plus two blink stalkers. They hurt. They hurt so good. Now, the thing for Bones, actually, he doesn't have a third base of his own, so he's risking this game really on... Archons and the ability to win his game, maybe potentially with this. Spine crawlers are burrowing. He does have roaches. If you can take the archons out, that's a whole different story. This gateway army becomes that much more, that much weaker. 
But he's got to make sure he's got to hurdle around himself. He actually might even want to bait the Mothership Core. This is one of those things. You know, peek out the Mothership Core a little bit, have the Mutas come forward, and then have the Archons pop the Mutas. Henry retaking his third base over here to the left side at the uh, one of the other third base options. Well, he's going to head on forward. There's a lot of Stalkers here, and that's the problem. The thing I'd be worried about, I would think almost the Stalkers alone could maybe take this army, but Henry doing a good job of trying to micro his way through. One Archon falls, two Archons fall, all Archons fall. Blink Stalkers coming over the top right now, but do they have enough might in them to be able to hold off against it? Now they're going to be blinking on top of the Mutas. Henry dropping in supply right now, and I think this is game. Oh, man. The Cherry on top. Time Warp with the Force Field blocking every reinforcement off, having to utilize the drones to, you know, help defend, but reinforcing units coming on in right now. The forward blink should be coming here momentarily as well. Henry desperately trying to fight his way, man. This is actually Hendrilisk's life right now. That was Hendrilisk's tournament life.